Hi, I'm Jerry. This is a letter I wish I didn't, didn't have to give. Dear Phil, you did it again. You brought us all together, but with one person missing, you. Phil, the happiest and fullest moments of my life I spend with you, from Berkeley to Chicago 68, to deportation from England and Ireland in 1970, to visiting Chile in 1971, to countless meals and movies and adventures and goodbyes and reunions. It terrifies me to realize that I, that I will never again be able to pick up the telephone and hear the voice in the other, other end say, hey man, Oaks here, what's happening? I first met you in May 1965 when a group of searching college students were just beginning to question our country's war and we were organizing a big teaching about Vietnam and we needed a folk singer to charm the people and spice up the speaking monotony and everybody else was busy and you canceled a commercial engagement to fly to Berkeley. You arrived, one man and a guitar, new songs scrawled on pieces of paper falling out of your pockets. And you had one quality which immediately excited me, your incredible curiosity. I have memories of you in navy peacoat and English cap, carrying three newspapers and two magazines and hurrying home for the West Village to catch the evening news. You wanted to know the details of everything. And when you felt good, you kept these innumerable small notebooks in which you recorded what you learned every day. You were a student of life. You taught me to look at all life as a movie and every incident as a scene. You loved being part of history, part of your time. But because of the pressures of the competitive and capitalistic rat race of artistic success and failure in America, you punished yourself for not being a production machine of nonstop creativity. But it'll be a hell of a long time before I grow tired of listening to the songs you created. I understand the pain you were going through the past few years. You felt you had lost your health. I remember a cold, rainy winter day about a year ago when your family persuaded you to fly from New York to California for a long rest. You were certain that you were dying. You spent the day looking for all your friends to say goodbye to them. You drove an hour to Queens to find me because the day before I had blown up in anger at you because you weren't taking care of yourself. And you wanted to say something to me for the last time. You said, Jerry, I'm never gonna see you again. Please promise me that you won't be angry at me. See you in the next life. We hugged and I could feel your body shaking with fear. You were convinced that we will never see each other, we would never see each other again. Well, Phil, I'm not angry at you. I miss our companionship and your soft soul, your constant support and encouragement, your truth-telling whatever the cost, your constant presence. I miss the sheepish grin, the allowing manner. I miss your sweetness. I know that you went to your death a fulfilled man because you lived you traveled, you felt, you wrote, you loved, you sure crammed a lot of life into those 35 years. I was privileged to know you for 11, and I hope that you knew during your life how much I loved you. Fortunately, we all have Phil Oaks inside of us. Thank you, Phil, for your sensitivity, your intelligence, your honesty, your joy, your excitement at being alive. Goodbye, Phil.